Hello, it's Ruby, and today I'm going to be giving you a complete guide to cottagecore. Cottagecore is an aesthetic which has become increasingly popular over the last year, and it's no wonder really, due to the pandemic, we have all had to adopt a slower pace of life, and that is exactly what this aesthetic embodies, slow living. Cottagecore is all about living simply and slowly and appreciating the little things. It is about being present in every moment, and thus living life to the fullest. I truly believe that to live our best life, we don't have to do a host of impressive things. Cottagecore is also very much linked to sustainability and living a sustainable lifestyle. So living simply and living harmoniously with nature. So kind of not consuming mindlessly. Uh, it's like very against fast fashion. Growing your own food is a huge part of this aesthetic and making your food from scratch. And then another key aspect of the aesthetic is domestic productivity. So I love productivity. My channel has, has very much focused on, but I love this focus on domestic productivity. It's doing things for their own success. It's in the activity itself that it gains its productivity. It's not necessarily working towards anything further afield. I think of domestic productivity as not being worldly and material success, but rather successes on a very small like domestic level where you are creating things on a daily basis and you're doing things and you're seeing the fruits of your labor but they're not for some like f far and mighty purpose there isn't some elaborate goal in mind it's creating small beautiful pleasures and moments with those that you love including yourself so this video is going to be separated into a few different sections just like with the dark academia video that I did. So we're going to start by thinking about activities because as I said in the other video, I think the crux of any aesthetic isn't about perception, it's not about how you look, it's not about the space, it's about the things that you do. Long walks in the middle of nowhere, just you and the world as one. Baking things for those you love and yourself and sharing these in precious moments, perhaps on a cold winter twilight, huddled up in blankets with good friends by the fire or maybe in the beginnings of a warm summer afternoon, laid out on picnic rugs with your family. Making your food from scratch and seeing everything that goes into that food that nourishes our bodies and our minds, being connected to the process and feeling grateful that these foods are here to keep us alive. Holding delicate pressed flowers between your fingertips and just about being able to smell the jasmine between the pages of the great book you use to hold them in place. Decorating your space with green and flowers and inviting nature into your home. Writing long letters to your family and friends, filled with special memories and maybe recipes you think they'd like. Sending these often is the main way of sharing what is happening in your life. Writing short stories and poems by hand in your favourite notebook, perched outside and listening to birdsong. Waking up early and throwing your window open wide to let in the sun and new birdsong. Lying outside on the grass even when it's damp and feeling the cold on your back and the warmth on your face. Making tea and watching the sun rise from your cottage window, your teacup between two hands. Reading your favourite books and poems over and over and over and cherishing the way the words sound on your lips. Hugging trees and feeling the bark, maybe taking etchings and trying to identify them. Leaning out of your window in your nightdress to listen to the world when you wake up or just before going to sleep. So as I said, Cottagecore is very much focused on living sustainably and more simply, and so I thought I would run through some quick ideas of how you can be more sustainable. Eat seasonable food and grow your own if you can. What's really important is sourcing mindfully, so look for local farmers markets and try and shop local as opposed to um, buying exported foods. And this also means that you can cut down on the amount of food you're buying in plastic packaging. Try to make things and like food from scratch when you can, so instead of going out and buying it, see if you can make it at home first.
don't buy into fast fashion, buy second hand or from small businesses who make the items by hand and use organic materials. I love Nini's and family, she makes everything from scratch and it's all beautifully made, really high quality and buy second hand whenever you can. So charity shops are an absolute blessing, you can find so many wonderful, unique, lovely things in charity shops which have so much more character as well than things that you buy new. You could also consider becoming vegan to reduce carbon emissions and to limit the effect that you're having on the environment. And you could also plant a tree. Which brings me on to the sponsor of today's video, which is an amazing company called Treedom. Treedom is committed to planting trees and supporting smallholder farms and agroforestry projects whilst doing so. This means that by planting a tree with them, you are not just helping the environment, but helping people as well. One of the really cool things is that you can see the impact your tree will have before you choose the one you want to buy. Today is Earth Day, and the theme this year is restoration. And planting a tree is a restorative thing that you can do for the planet. It's a small thing, but can make a huge difference. You can really easily donate and plant a tree with one click and then follow the story of your tree and its agroforestry project online, which is so cool. Like it has its own webpage where you can track what, what's happening. Honestly, this is such a cool thing you can do and I will leave a link to the website down below. Okay, so now we're going to think about how to make your living space more in line with this aesthetic and how to decorate your bedroom, for example, to uh, kind of emulate this. One thing which is a huge part of this aesthetic is flowers and wildflowers in particular. So with spring here and summer on the way to collect flowers and put them in pretty milk bottles and jugs and vases and just have flowers all over your room if you can. Also stick up dried flowers. This is especially good in autumn and winter when you don't have access to fresh ones. Find little trinkets to decorate your space, things with a story behind them. Also botanical prints are a great thing to put up in a cottage core inspired space. You could even try doing your own. And finally, decorating your space with beautiful books. So there are gorgeous illustrated books and obviously the added benefit is that there are always books around which you can dip into, which I think is the most important thing in any space. Now on to cottage core essentials. A ceramic mixing bowl, very important um, for when you're doing baking and these ones are so traditional and so pretty. Having a nice tea set I think is really important. You can find really nice teacups in charity shops really affordably, like with charity shops open it's really worth going and look, taking a look. I found a, a huge set of teaware for £14 the other day and um, I'm so happy with it. Also I think there's something really special about loose leaf tea um, and even making your own tea leaves framed photographs of people that you love, and also Polaroid prints, watercolour paints, jars and glass pots for pens and paintbrushes and flowers, a candlestick holder and lanterns, a picnic basket, very key for all of those picnics. Okay, so next I'm going to go through some outfit inspiration. So I've put together a few outfits and hopefully this can give you some inspiration for outfits that you can try. Okay, so next let's go on to book recommendations because of course I couldn't make a video and then not recommend books related to the aesthetic. So first, the poetry of Emily Dickinson. If you didn't know, Emily Dickinson is my favourite poet. She lived most of her life secluded in Amherst, New England and her poetry was very introspective in a very progressive way and very much drew on nature. Uh, if you didn't know, Emily Dickinson was a very keen gardener and she loved flowers. She often included them in her letters. Actually, reading her letters too is, a, is, is something you might enjoy. Also, uh, for poetry, I'm going to recommend this poetry anthology, which is the Four Seasons anthology by Every Man's Poetry. And also the Romantic Poets, uh, anything by the Romantic Poets. Uh, so think Keats, Shelley, 
Wordsworth, Byron, because they all draw on nature, you know, that is one of the predominant themes of the Romantics. Also, Walt Whitman's poetry, oh my goodness, if you haven't read Walt Whitman before, then you're in for a treat. So, um, in particular, I'd say start with Song of Myself, possibly his most famous poem, at least his most acclaimed. Next for books, uh, The Green Gage Summer by Ruma Godden, which is one of my favourites, and I don't know why it hasn't received more attention. This is about four British children who go on holiday with their mother to France, but their mother becomes ill as soon as they get there. And so they end up staying at this rem remote hotel for the summer by themselves. Next, the Alice in Wonderland book. So Alice Underground and Alice's Adventures Through the Looking Glass. Uh, anything by Thomas Hardy in particular, Far From the Madding Crowd. Thomas Hardy, of course, he's famous for his descriptions of rural landscapes and for setting his books in the countryside. Uh, How's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. Uh, you've probably seen the Studio Ghibli film and the book is fantastic too. The Secret Life of Bees by Sue Monk Kidd. Of course, I couldn't recommend Cottagecore books without mentioning Anne of Green Gables or anything else by Ellen Montgomery, the most quintessentially Cottagecore character, I think, in all of literature. Love Aubrey by Suzanne Lafleur. Uh, this is about a young girl who is, at the beginning of the book, left alone, like she's just in the house by herself. She's been left home alone. The Great Godden by Meg Rossoff, which is about a long summer where everything changes within this um, kind of upper-class family. Me and Emma by Elizabeth Flock, which is one of my favourites. I need to reread it. It's uh, set in 1960s North Carolina, I think. The Go Between by Elfie Hartley, one of my favourites, and about a boy called Leo looking back at the summer he was 12 when he became a go between between these. Uh, two lovers and very much again like atonement. Winesburg, Ohio by Sherwood Anderson. This is a collection of short stories which are all set in one village in uh, like Winesburg, Ohio. Wonderfully provincial. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Pine by Francine Toon, which is kind of like a winter spin on this aesthetic. The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett, of course, had to be on here. And then I say this is one of the most uh, like associated books with this aesthetic, which is Beatrix Potter. Um, so I've included the collected works of Beatrix Potter because um, I didn't think I could not. And then also books which are like which teach you about nature and about animals and plants. So I'm including this one, The Secret Life of the Otter by Andy Howard, which is a wonderful book filled with gorgeous pictures and teaches you a lot about these amazing creatures. Okay, so next four TV recommendations, and with an E, Little House on the Prairie, The Durrells, The World of Peter Rabbit and Friends, as I said, Beatrix Potter, and also Gravity Falls. Then for films, the 2019 Little Women Greta Gerwig, which is probably my favourite film of all time, Sense and Sensibility, To Olivia, which is the story of Roald Dahl and his daughter who passed away, Matilda, A Quiet Passion, which is the life of Emily Dickinson, wonderful film, Miss Potter, The Life of Beatrix Potter, The Secret Garden, both film adaptations, so the one from the 1990s and then the recent one from last year. The earlier one is definitely a lot better. Then the live action remakes of Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella and Maleficent. Uh, the Secret World of Ariete, Tinkerbell and the Great Fairy Rescue, which is a random one to put on here, but like from recollections of my childhood, it feels like this one should be on the list. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, Finding Neverland, that's the story of Jay and Barry. Uh, Alice in Wonderland, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, which is such a classic. Nanny McPhee and the Big Bang, Moonrise Kingdom, Roald and Beatrix. This fictionalizes an encounter between Roald Dahl and Beatrix Potter. And then for music, we've got the Finding Neverland soundtrack, the Cider House Rules soundtrack, Anything by Jack Johnson, the soundtrack for Forrest Gump, uh, Anything Studio Ghibli, Brandy Carlyle's music. Also the Secret Sisters. Joshua Radin. The Anne with an E soundtrack, of course, this was my most listened to thing last year on Spotify. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that it gave you some inspiration into this aesthetic. Um, you can find so many ideas and beautiful photographs on Pinterest and I might link my Pinterest board below actually if you want to just have a look. I wouldn't say that I totally associate with this aesthetic. I think with all aesthetics, it's really important to be mindful going in. It's, I don't think it's a good idea to copy them um, and to 
live up to them. I think the great thing about online aesthetics and kind of the growth of this, which we've, we've seen so much, you know, this last year, like seeing all of these aesthetics popping up. And I think the great thing about them is that you're able to see yourself in them and you're able to get inspiration and connect with like-minded people to you. So um, there are aspects of the cottage core aesthetic which I do relate to and I do very much enjoy and it's wonderful being able to find other people online who also enjoy that. But always be mindful going into aesthetics and um, like pick and choose, take bits from different ones. Ultimately it sounds cheesy but the important thing is staying true to yourself and making sure that you're acting in the way that makes you happiest and um, potentially there are aspects of cottage core which would help you act at your happiest. I think it, it could be easy to become almost obsessive over emulating a particular aesthetic and always staying within the bounds of that. But as I said, I think the beautiful thing about aesthetics is that they can help us to live more in line with our own values. So just kind of make sure that you don't become sidetracked by an aesthetic, if that makes sense. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a productive week.